Hello, my name is Mike Pettit. I'm a co-founder and the CIO of Open Amplify. We're on the hook today in Annapolis Harbor with Dr. Jeff Connor Linton, who is an associate professor of linguistics at Georgetown University and a longtime participant in the Open Amplify project. Today we're going to discuss the subject of indexicality, which is an important research underpinning of a lot of the things we do with signals in the Open Amplify web service. So, Jeff, tell us, what is indexicality? Indexicality comes from the same root as your index finger to point. And the idea is that when we use language, we're pointing at a lot of different things. We're situating ourselves in relation to who we're talking to, in relation to the things we're talking about, and in relation to the social context in which we're talking about them. And so we compress that into the language we use. There are pointers in the language that we use to all those different aspects of meaning. I see. Okay, so indexicality not only indicates the relationship that we have with certain subjects, but uh, it can also, uh, in effect, be an indicator of what we're trying to project of ourselves and in, in, in really, in effect, judgments we're making of others in the way we speak. Is that correct? Sure. The way that I speak reflects project some some image of myself that I'm trying to sell and also uh, project certain roles or identities onto the people I'm talking to or maybe even the audience that I'm speaking in front of. So it, for a simple example, if I were to offer somebody advice, in effect, I'm making a statement that I am an expert about something and that this person needs my guidance. Sure, but you can modulate that to a certain extent. You can be humble about the advice you're giving or say, well, I'm no expert, but, but oh, the whole time underlying that, there's the fundamental fact that the act that you're doing is to assume some knowledge. Okay. Now, the Open Amplify service, of course, its mission is to always uh, surface, increasingly surface every shred we can of meaning from, from content, and to do that in a way that makes sense and is useful to people, we need to express uh, the things that we express in terms of their experiences, in, in, in ways that are useful to them. So we pick, for example, signals like topics or, or polarity or guidance because these are concepts to which people can relate and can, uh, can make use in an automated manner. Uh, and therefore, the design of these signals rests very fully upon indexicality uh, as a concept. And uh, when we spoke just before we sat down, we decided that we were going to speak to the topic signal as a good example right. of, of uh, where indexicality has made a contribution to our research. Sure. So would you care to speak to that? Well, if you're trying to figure out the topic, if you're a machine, not a human being, but a machine trying to behave like a human being and figure out the topic of a stretch of discourse, of talk or of, of a text and so on, uh, what you need to do is model what a human being might do. Now, on the one hand, there's some pretty obvious things that a human being keys into, and that might be the frequency of mention of a particular referent or something like that. So obviously one of the things that, that we need to identify is which nouns refer to which reference in the real world, because one referent can have many different names or pronouns can refer to it and so on. That's co-reference, right? That's co-reference. Good. Well, we spoke about that earlier with, uh, with Doc, Dr. Steve DeRose, uh, and you can refer to that one as well if you want to know more, more about co-reference. So carry on. Okay. So that's one way of sort of uh, focusing in on what is this talk about. But human beings also don't rely just on the, the frequency of mention. They also rely on other resources like where in the sentences uh, are different reference being mentioned. Are they prominent syntactic? Are they the subject of the sentence as opposed to buried as some sort of object of a preposition? Um, also, in terms of in the overall discourse, are they mentioned at the beginning, for example? Sure. Where often topics are nominated. Or in conversations, sometimes topics do change, but where did this conversation end up? Are they mentioned toward the end, in the last paragraph or chunk of the sure. discourse? So what we need to do is, is, like a human being, triangulate multiple sources of information. Now, the other piece that we need to do, and this is where some of the signals in, in Open Amplify come in, is that there's not just the algorithms that are working directly on topic, but again, just like a human being, we're also looking at 
well, where are the opinions being expressed, or about what are the opinions uh -huh. being expressed? Um, where, uh, what are the targets of any advice that's being sought or given? Oh, because sure. That, all those things together, along with the frequency and, to and prominence, will give a, a greater probability that this topic is the main topic. Is the main topic. About. Certainly, we, we, we have been speaking a lot in, in recent times of the concept of engagement. Uh, given a text with many, many different possible topics, with which topic or topics is the author most engaged? Now, in marketing terms, that becomes very, very important. Uh, we, we did, uh, we've done some demos, and uh, one example I seem to recall was something along the lines of uh, Tiger all day, Tiger all night, Tiger all weekend. Uh, why don't we discuss health care, which is actually important, uh, back at the time when, when Tiger was very topical. Um, and we as human beings understood that the most important thing was health care because that was the, the thing about which the person was offering guidance and expressing some specific polarity as opposed to Tiger, which was repeated a number of times, but sure. really wasn't the focus. And, and the lesson there being that frequency is not, is not a reliable indicator of engagement. So, exactly. So indexicality it gives us the foundation by which, in effect, to make the decisions as to which factors we should weigh in the creation of a signal, is that right? Exactly, because if, if something's being focused on from a variety of different perspectives or functional vectors, then that's more likely to be what everybody's focused on than just one particular tool is being hammered several times. Super. Okay, so we, we've had a little discussion of how, in the case of topic and, and in other signals, we've used indexicality as an underpinning. Uh, let's spend a minute or so and talk about what we would do with indexicality for a future signal that doesn't exist yet. Hypothetically, let's assume we made a decision that we were going to create a signal called pomposity, which uh, indicates, measures the degree to which a person is using pompous language. How might indexicality help us decide the right way to build that signal? Okay, so along the idea of multiple tools or multifunctionality focusing on something, one of the, empirically what we'd do is we'd take some texts that we thought were pompous, just mm -hmm. impressionistically, and some others that we thought were sort of humble, humble or whatever, <laughs> okay. um, not, not expressing pompousness, and we would then look at a lot of the features and see which ones were being used more frequently and being used together, sort of articulating with each other toward the same purpose. And we'd probably come up with looking at some things like pompousness having a lot to do with ego might be indicated by a high frequency of first-person pronouns, I, maybe we, depending upon the context. Um, but also uh, other sorts of features like um, agentless passives and some things that are often used to express opinions as if they just aren't even up for contest, as okay. if they were, everybody knew this, and just very detached sorts of, of presentation of what are truly highly you know, opinionated uh, perspectives. I see, okay. And then, so basically, indexicality would give us the means by which to make decisions that say, if you want to determine pomposity in this case, look for that, look for that, look for that in your, in, in your text, uh, and if you see a high uh, occurrence of those particular things, then uh, you, there's a fair bet that you've, you've detected something that's being pompous. Right, and then you could also use that tool, the, the pomposity index, to, for example, go through a corpus and identify which topics, for example, are more likely to inspire pomposity. That's interesting. And you can feed it back on itself to a certain extent. Okay. So that would add to the probability that this was a pompous occasion. Okay. Well, so for the audience, by no means are we suggesting that we're about to engage in an effort to create a signal called pomposity, although maybe we will. But uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Jeff Connor Linton of Georgetown University for sharing his insights on indexicality with us, uh, one of the underpinnings of the Open Amplify project, and uh, consonant with our mission of uh, constantly uh, improving your ability to understand web content. Thank you very much for listening.